Hi guys. So talking about uh, travel today. When when you travel, there are like two things that you always have to sort out first. One is your travel to the destination. The second thing is accommodation. And this is something that I realized in my last trip to Scotland. And this is what I want to talk about, which is hotel versus BNB. So my, I am very bad in booking these things because I always go for the most expensive option that I can afford or that I can find in that area. Uh, and uh, when we went to Scotland, so this is uh, last September and uh, we stayed one night in Edinburgh and then from there we were uh, going with the tour. So they booked the accommodation uh, for the rest of it. But for that first day I booked the accommodation and I booked like proper nice rooms in a premier inn. <clears throat> Premier Inn is usually my uh, hotel of choice because it's not uh, very expensive, but it is uh, quite nice. And this time I've been to I've been to Edinburgh before. I had lived in the the hub by Premier Inn, and that was kind of like uh, very automated and everything very electronic and nice. A small room, but very nicely appointed. I loved it. I, I mentioned that in my um, review as well. Oh, I've never published that, so I'll publish that article. Uh, but yeah, and so I love that in that as well. And uh, I went for Premier Inn again because, you know, uh, if you liked it once. But this time I didn't like it very much because it was not the hub, but it was still very automated and electronic. Uh, let me tell you a very quick story. When I used to teach computers and uh, uh, let's say in 1999, uh, by this time I already had like four, about four years of experience teaching computers. And I had gotten uh, quite good. So when there was lab room, so uh, lab room is American. So what's practical? We used to call it practical sessions. So imagine that a, a big room, the four uh, four walls, and then along two walls, computers, about like ten, and uh, about. Uh, 10 students sometimes more maybe 12 14 students some of them sharing and each one is practicing uh, they're all practicing something that i have taught them in the theory session and uh, they would naturally run into issues and have questions so only me supervising all of these students so whenever somebody asks like then it's my job to go answer the question as quickly as possible and then uh, go to the next one because there will always be somebody raising their hand and asking excuse me sir sir this is happening and all that so i got good enough with that that if somebody asked me over i could go look at the screen and by the time i arrived at that like within a split second i would know what the problem was and what the solution was and i would give them right away like do this thing and they would say no no sir what's happening is it's like they would still go and tell me the problem and then what I would do, I would repeat the same solution that I gave them as soon as I arrived and this time they would accept it and they would go on doing it. So that way I realized that I have to first listen to their problem because until I listen, they don't think that I know what's going on even though I do. Uh, so instead of telling them that dude, I know what's happening, come on, just listen to me blindly and do it, I just stopped giving the answer and then waited uh, a few seconds until they could explain the problem and then gave them the answer. I knew the answer all along, okay. And uh, the same kind of feeling I got when we got to Premier Inn because they were they had like a couple of machines where you can check in and then it will give you the card key uh, and uh, everything will be sorted out automatically. But there are a couple of people who are there uh, like clerks or reception clerk kind of duties but their whole job is to help us to guide us through that automated process that's all so um, and because they have already heard all the questions they know all the answers so they know what to say at each step so even if you ask them something it's gonna be something they have already heard like maybe 10,000 times um, so I felt kind of like that kind of situation where um, I was being guided through things and then they probably would probably get rid of those guys uh, later on and they just leave the machines there because everybody will be trained in the use of those machines by that time or maybe leave one person uh, to guide. So that was all right, not uh, like a usual good experience even though they used to use computers even then or in other hotels they do. Uh, it was not really a good experience, felt very... Um, like a rat through the maze or like a chicken in the coop. 
uh, kind of thing. Uh, and that same thing when we went to the rooms, so I had my own room and it was huge. We all had our own rooms and my room was quite big because I had booked a big room. Uh, huge big uh, big bed as well i will show you the pictures i took the pictures and a video so i'll show you that okay here are my first thoughts on the premiere in york place in edinburgh it's quite a nice room i booked a family room or i think you would call it double room although they list it as family room just for myself because i like to be comfortable and as you can see it's got a nice big bed which looks comfortable it's a nice big sofa there as well okay there's a desk with lots of space well not lots of space but you can see uh, some implements for making tea or coffee at the TV, I have not turned it on yet, but I'm pretty sure that it's a smart TV, which you can connect to your phone and watch your Netflix or whatever you like. Uh, this is the only closet that's available in the room, meaning just a few hangers on a rod. Uh, big mirror, which is good, not full length, uh, but still. I think it'll be good enough to get ready. And this is doors for, you know, like dirty socks and stuff. As you would notice, there is a lamp light on both sides, but there are no power points. There are no power sockets anywhere on either side of the bed so if like me you like to charge your phone and still have it handy during the night then you can't do that you would have to plug that in somewhere near here near the tv there are four plugs here but um three actually but uh no none near the bed there are a couple of them here as well okay Let's look at the bathroom. The bathroom is quite nice. It's, it's got a nice space. Um, although this thing, cheap. Hand body gel, not the bottles. It's just a dispenser. Uh, it says gentle soap here in the, above the wash basin. It's all right. There was only one bath towel there, which is also quite thin and well, I would not use it if I didn't have to kind of thing uh, and there are absolutely no hand towels in here so on the whole uh, and you can see that this is like the dispenser is full of these so these are like single single sheets not the roll uh, so basically it's a nice spacious one and you can see some of the things are quite well thought out but it does give you a feeling like a kind of like a cheap feeling for an expensive room for example like they want you to be in and out just you know use the space get out so that the next person can move in and they provide you the basic minimum that you would use i don't get a feeling of uh, any like you know an old-fashioned uh, welcome to our inn kind of feeling while it was a fantastic room very nice room big windows curtains everything nice good quality it still had that very antiseptic feeling uh, that you get in places like corporate kind of places corporate kind of feel so you got that kind of feeling um, and I don't know if you know this one, this, there's a uh, TV show called Yes Minister based on a book. So I've read the books and I've um, um, watched the TV series as well. And there's one episode that always um, sticks out at me. And this is where the minister, James Hacker, is talking about a hospital. And his uh, civil, sec uh, civil secretary, uh, what's his name? Humphreys, I think. Yeah, Sir Humphreys. And uh, they're having an argument about it. And this happens in the whole, whole uh, uh, episode that... 
Sir Humphrey said, like, the hospital runs so smoothly, sir. It's, it's got so many rooms, it's got so many beds, it's, it's running perfectly. It's we won awards for running smoothly. Uh, so uh, why, what's your problem? And then the James Hacker minister goes, say, like, but there are no patients. And somebody like, what's that got to do? They will just mess everything up. So uh, this is the kind of feeling that I got in there was that we were there, um, like, just ring the cash register kind of thing, you know? So very, everything is there and everything is there. All subtle, just come in, sleep, get up, go, you know? Like a time lapse kind of thing. That's the feeling I got. Um, okay, now contrast that with the feeling that we got when we were we went to the Isle of Sky. So in Isle of Sky, we stayed in in Scotland. We stayed in BNBs because the, they had booked it and they were nice BNBs. Uh, so the touring company, what was it called Robbie's, Robbie's had booked it. Very nice touring company, by the way. I should do a review on just alone on them. They're fantastic, uh, and they had booked the accommodation. So this is in the Isle of Sky itself, and um, oh, I can't remember the name of the BNB now, but uh, just the I think they pretty much are the same in character. So wonderful place. It's it feels a bit weird when you get in because it feels like somebody's home. Uh, but when you actually get settled in an hour or so, that same thing feels so amazing because uh, it's like a, this is the stairs and there's a sign on the stairs. And it says something like come in as a customer, leave as a friend, something like that. I've taken a picture of that, I'll have to find it. Because it was like somebody's home, uh, very well appointed, well furnished. So there's a guitar there, there's something else there. So smaller rooms, big contrast that the rooms were very small. Mine had like a sloping roof, like an attic kind of thing. So uh, I could not stand straight up in all the room, like half the room I could. Uh, and then the bathroom also very small, but everything very clean, very usable. Uh, they had, they give you all the, you know, the towels and everything. So everything very clean, nice, uh, but small. It doesn't feel like, you know, luxury and all that, but it feels like quite comfort. Yeah, that's, I think that's the, uh, that's the comparison that between luxury and comfort. So it was all comfortable. And uh, when we went for breakfast next morning, oh my God, we went crazy in that little room because there were so many nice things, little decoration, little pieces on the window. Um, and we wanted to take pictures of everything. And uh, uh, some of us, Harsha, wanted to like, you know, pick up the guitar and play and then see, touch things and all that. Um, and there were some instruments because the people who owned that, they or their family members, they used to play those instruments. And so, and the, the hostess that we had, she was like a replacement hostess. So our hostess was uh, not available because she had some illness in the family. She had to go to the hospital. Uh, but this replacement hostess, she was great. And uh, we found out she was even better than the normal hostess in Livid, but they were both both great. So it felt like you, you're being a guest in somebody's house and then they are uh, asking you like, what do you want for uh, breakfast? There's, there's all kind of cereal, there's tea, coffee, butter. Everything is there, and which you can get in a hotel as well. But there's this homely touch, which makes you feel like, oh yes, this is a life. It doesn't make you feel like, come on, let's have some coffee and then go out into the city. You feel like you can just stay there. I felt like I should just go there and live in a BNB for like a month and then just sit and stare at the sea and um, write a book. No, you could not look at the sea from where we were, uh, from that uh, particular BNB. But um, the sea was like very close. You could walk. And there were benches uh, at, the, at there as well, um, near the sea. But uh, this is the feeling that we got. So we've got pictures, some pictures from there as well. Um, and very, very nice. Very fun. Uh, and price-wise, it was slightly cheaper than the Premier Inn. Uh, and, and not very cheap. I think it was about 70 quid a night. Um, and so it's not very cheap. But if you go to London, you're going to find the same thing. And Sky is very uh, touristy. So lots of people go there. And I can see why, because it's beautiful. It is fantastically beautiful. You just want to go crazy with the camera there and uh, in the town itself and all around. So the bridges and the ocean, everything. 
Um, so yeah, that, that is, that's the comparison I wanted to show you and share with you that sometimes instead of going for the most expensive option, is it might be a good idea to go for a more comfortable option. And these days there's not much risk in that because uh, there are always all these reviews on uh, TravelAdvisor and Expedia and TripAdvisor. Uh, oh yeah, TripAdvisor, not TravelAdvisor. Uh, so there are all these reviews available and you can read them and take some of them with a grain of salt. Uh, but you can go and uh, try them out. So this was really a good experience based on that. Um, the other one that I was thinking about, the Airbnb. I've never tried that yet, uh, but I'm afraid to try that because they are, you know, uh, there are lots of bad reviews about that as well and uh, some horror stories about them. So I don't even read the news and I know the horror story. So I am a little bit scared to try that. But B&Bs, yeah, I would recommend that if you're going to some place like this, especially if you're going to Scotland, a place like this. Scottish people are so wonderful. So like, um, uh, do you want more cereal? Do you want more tea? All right, it's okay, I can make toast. So I'm trying to do a Scottish accent, like a Scottish female accent, but I'm absolutely failing. But uh, they were so wonderful. So Scottish people are generally nice, but if you are uh, like a guest in their home, you get the actual feeling of being a guest, not a customer, but a guest. So highly recommend it. Uh, that's about it. That's all I'm going to talk about. It's, it's too long for just a short, dis uh, short discussion. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.